So hello Wealth Creatives and thank you for joining me again for another mini masterclass. Today we are going to be talking about the connector which is our next sacred money archetype in this journey of discovering who all the sacred money archetypes are. If you're not sure who your sacred money archetype is or your top sacred money archetype, check out the link in the comments. You can take our free quiz and you can discover for yourself who is your top uh, top three, well, your top three sacred money archetypes, um, but your top one will be able to dive into greater detail with these mini masterclasses that are happening all through November. So before I jump in too much about the connector, just a little bit of an overview. Um, I, if you haven't met before, my name is Brooke Hunt. I'm a financial intuitive and a money mentor here at Laura Elkislasi and Co. Um, yep, that's me at the top there, and the other amazing woman there is Laura Elkislasi herself. So we really pride ourselves at Laura Elkislasi and Co. to be different money mentors, to be walking our own walk and our own talk when it comes to creating financial freedom for our clients. So the difference that we have in our way we money mentor is we understand that there are three essential pillars that any business must have to be able to expand and to reach that goal of financial freedom, which we all have. And those pillars are strategy, energy, and profitability. So often we see when our clients first come to us, one of these pillars are missing. So it's understanding which element you need in your business to be able to support you to create that financial freedom. And of course, the sacred money archetypes are one of the essential parts of the energy pillar of the, um, of the work that we do. And that is what we are diving into today and finding out more about today. So the sacred money archetypes they are just like when we work with our clients the amount of ahas and oh my goodness is how did you know that's what i'm like with money how does how does that work it really is like cracking your money code when we are looking and diving into your sacred money archetypes it brings information and understanding at such a deep level that our clients have not had before which is just so exciting to be able to see them to be able to go oh my goodness and then what we can do what we do with these sacred money archetypes is we show you how to use your sacred money archetypes so you can then bring in that wealth into your business into your personal life you can thrive with the sacred money archetypes by your side but to do that you need to understand exactly what their role is what they're doing and how they are creating that um, the relationship you have with money so that is what i am going to give you a little overview of today and as i say at the end of this i will let you know a few other ways of how you can dive deeper into understanding the sacred money archetypes but there are eight sacred money archetypes and they are all have their own personality they are all um have their own their well, yeah, they are their own um way they act, the way they think about money, their own challenges, their own strengths. They all have their own um, money, money, um, I was going to say money mastery, but the way they do interact and work with money is all very different. And that's why we've been introducing you to them one by one over this month. So as you can see on the screen there, you can see each of the sacred money archetypes. But today is all about the connector. Today is all about the connector, which is your inner relationship creator. And with all of the sacred money archetypes, if you are the connector, or even if you're not, even just by saying the connector is your inner relationship creator, I'm sure you already have an idea of what the connector is about. I mean, the connector is pretty much in the name with it. <laughs> but if you're a connector, you might already be going, uh huh, okay, I'm getting it. I'm already starting to understand. Excuse, you might see a little puppy sticking her head in. Little Pepper has come to say hello. Now, hopefully the slides are still moving. I'm just double checking on my phone. We're gonna be diving in to the connector. Yes. 
So uh, let me tell you a little bit about holding back with the connector they really are in deep when they meet you you'll you get to see who you get to see the connector is who they are in their whole being and they love those deep connections that heart to heart to be able to create that connection with somebody else and in fact it's normally these long-term relationships that create the income for the connector the connector when if you're the connector had to choose between friendship and money it would be friendship every time they really do value that friendship over income, over money, That's the connection that they have with others. And they really do prefer that and have that connection over making money. If they had to choose, it would be that friendship probably 90% of the time. But part of that as well is the connector will always choose relationships, majority of the time choose relationships over money because they also don't really wanna have the responsibility of money they don't really want to have to think about it they prefer just to be having fun relationships having those conversations creating connection they that's much more enjoyable for the creator than it is to be able to talk about money and to take financial responsibility um, they would much rather someone else take that responsibility for them they'd much rather just live and enjoy the moment of the connection than have to worry about finances like it's a bit of a burden for the connector to have to worry and think about it they'd much rather someone else deal with that for them <laughs> the connector also has an amazing amount of faith and trust and it's that faith and trust that the connector has that they'll always be taken care of the money will always be available to them that will always be there and again that's in part of that abdicating responsibility of not wanting to have to deal with money they'd much rather have faith that it's just going to be there without having to put their their awareness and their effort and their energy into money so as i say they'd much rather have their energy into their friendships into their connections into creating that that connection whether that be with clients or friendships or that inner circle that is so much more important to them than money. So they'd much rather just have faith and trust that money's just gonna be there. It's just gonna be there. They're gonna be taken care of and that's absolutely okay. They will put their faith and trust in the, in the universe, in spirit, in somebody else. It's always not in themselves. It's always in somebody else that they would prefer to have it in. Sorry, I've just gone and lost my little pointer. She's not going to help me get to the next screen. Oh, here we go. I found it. <laughs> so the sacred strengths of our connector. So our connector, the sacred strengths, they are trusting, they are innocent, and they are resilient. And when I say those strengths to you, if again, you're the connector, you'll be nodding away, I'm sure. And if you know a connector, you'll be like, aha. Uh -huh. And everything I've told you so far about the connector just really does cement in these sacred strengths so that trusting element of the connector they are so open-hearted they are trusting they trust in as i said before about understanding in that relationship the money will always be there they can trust and have faith in that they have trust in their creation in their relationships and in that connection they have with others they trust that when they show up open-hearted that those others will as well they are open-minded open-hearted and willing to accept everyone really it's there's there's no um <laughs> there's no hoops you have to jump over with the connector they just they just trust they trust they're trusting they will trust you in and that ability for them to you to trust them and them to trust you is what helps them create those connections you know what it's like if you're in the presence of someone you're not a hundred percent sure of if you're getting everything from them if you feel like they're hiding part of themselves you yourself can't be open you yourself can't put your trust in them but that's what the the essence of the, the strength of the connector is because they create that energy of trust you're able to open up to them more. You're able to really allow yourself to be seen by the connector. And that is one of their glorious strengths to be able to allow you to be seen, to be trusted. You can trust them, they can trust you, 
and you can know what you see is what you're going to get with the connector it's a beautiful way that strengthens that connection as well as to have that trust the connector also comes with that innocence and in part it's that innocence of just you know, that, that blind faith and trust that everything is going to be okay um, and it's that innocence as well that builds that connection because as I said they're not hiding part of themselves they're able to be open and often it is with that innocence they see everyone as it's like that the innocence of just seeing the good in everyone yeah and being able to see the best in people and with that comes that willingness to create that connection and it doesn't matter about past history or what's been happening the connector has this glorious deep trust and and this innocent quality that just makes them just sort of want to bring everyone into their inner circle the other sacred strength the last sacred strength of our connector is that of resilience and this resilience the connector needs <laughs> and they have in spades as well because the connector continually as we've spoken about has that faith has that trust that money will always be there for them and they have this resilience to keep going and moving forward creating those connections moving forward with that faith that they'll always be supported and often some of the other sacred archetypes they would have already <laughs> perhaps like gone all right well i'm not going to trust this anymore because you know it's been a bit of a hurdle whereas the connector will continually move forward with that with that resilience of that that innocent quality that it will all be okay and we just we just got to keep moving we just keep going we keep going as we are and it is um yeah it is actual glorious strength of our connector that resilience that they have so what about the challenges of our connector and again as i've been talking we were talking about all those glorious parts of the connector but i'm sure it'll be no surprise to you the challenges they have because of how they are because of that energy so because the connector loves to have connections over money they much rather friendship the mother much rather had that connection with you on that personal level than on the monetary level they also lack that financial independence they would much prefer somebody else to be able to take care of that for them they don't want to have to deal with money. They don't, it's like that annoying, like additional part of life. It's like, why can't I just have all connections? Why can't we just all be friends? Why can't we just like, you know, swap goods and just hang out and be and connect? Like, why do we even need money? Like it's, they have this glorious optimism. The money will always be there. And part of that is so they don't have to take that financial responsibility they lack that financial independence they would much as I said prefer for somebody else to take care of it for them um, they would much rather someone else deal with it and often they put their energy into that relationship with someone else to be able to deal with their financial um, their financial situation then they will creating financial independence themselves so a lot of the time you may find the connector is very dependent financially in a relationship you may see connectors um, in relationships which they should no longer well i shouldn't say they should no longer be in but there possibly isn't for their highest interest but they are there because of the financial situation and they are dependent on another person the part of that not that lacking of financial independence is they also don't feel empowered by money they can't feel empowered with money because they don't want to have that responsibility so as i said money is just like an additional burden really for them so they struggle to feel empowered by it and the connector will see some of the other archetypes sacred money archetypes who are that have that empowered um connection with money and it is really is a struggle for the connector to have that they don't understand they feel empowered by relationships they feel empowered by connection they don't feel empowered by money the problem with these the what well, these um challenges that the connector has is because they don't want that financial independence because they struggle to feel empowered by it they can often find themselves being taken advantage of financially um and or they find themselves being kept from creating wealth it's often not something that the creators or the connectors sorry even think about you don't even think about it but 
they will often find themselves in situations where they are taken advantage of financially. Pop this one down. They can also feel overwhelmed with financial details. Apologies. It's okay. <laughs> Little Pepper, our puppy Pepper, is deciding something is a bit scary for her. It's okay. Um, apologies. So yes, yeah, so they become overwhelmed with just basic financial details. You would possibly find the connector doesn't often look at their bank account details, their credit card statements may come in or their bank account statements may come in and they may just get put on a pile because even just that basic um, accounting and looking at those financial details can overwhelm the connector, which is why also they often find a relationship with someone who can take that responsibility for them and look after them in that way. It stops them from really putting their focus on creating money because they don't, they like that overwhelm. Yeah. It's an additional aspect of the creator that, uh, sorry, the connector, I keep calling them the creator, um, the connector that really does inhibit their ability to be able to create that wealth. So the sacred money contract of our amazing connector, every one of our sacred money archetypes has these sacred money contracts. Bear with me two seconds. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Apologies, let's see if that is a bit better. So each of us are saying each of our sacred money archetypes have a sacred money contract. And with their sacred money contract, Part of the contract is a bit harder for the sacred money archetype to take on. The other parts are breeze. And when I tell you this sacred money contract, or you may have even read it yourself, you will be able to see if you are a connector or even just from what I have told you, which part is the challenge for the connector. So the sacred money contract for our connector is to empower financial independence through the value of friendships. So yeah, it is that to empower financial independence. That is the challenge for our connector. That is part of that sacred money contract that is the work for them. The, the friendship part is easy for our connector. That's not, that's a breeze, but the understanding and to empower themselves and empower their financial independence through that value of friendship, that is the challenging part of their sacred money contract. And that is where the work is for our connectors. So how do our connectors create that sacred money alignment? If you're our connector, I encourage you to pause this recording and take some time just to consider these questions. These questions come from the sacred money archetype cards and it really is about pushing, pushing the limits for our connector and really opening their thinking, opening the energy around money for them and really unlocking some of those keys, some of those doors that have been locked for so long within the energy of money. So I, Encourage you if you're a connector, I will just read through these quickly, but as I say, this is where you want to pause, grab a pen and paper and really just take them on board and give some thought to it. So the first one is, if you were solely responsible for your money management, what are eight financial details you need to know? So again, the money management, your financial money management as a connector is often with somebody else. These are things that you wouldn't be doing yourself often, you'd be having often someone else to do it. And I say often because it is the archetypal energy, we see these patterns and not every single pattern is going to be um, what happens in every single connector, but the majority of, it, of our connectors will have this. So if you were to be solely responsible for your money, for your financial independence, for your money management, what are eight financial details you'd need to know? And I want you to have a think about that and write those down. And if you can go for more than eight, amazing. The next question for our connectors to consider is what are three qualities you appreciate in the people who have assisted you financially? And in what specific ways would your life change if you adapted these qualities for yourself? 
So as a connector, as I said, often you'll have those around you who have been supporting you, whether that's your financial management, um, whether that is being able to make those financial decisions for you. What do you, as the connector, what have you appreciated or those qualities that you have seen in these people that you could take on? And how would your life change if you did? The last question for our connectors to bring in that sacred money alignment is what belief would you have to acknowledge and transform in order to empower yourself to be financially independent? This is a big one for our connectors because the beliefs are part of our energy system. The beliefs that create our day to day is what creates the way we receive money, the way we our work with money, the way we have a relationship with money, these beliefs um, and often fears that are sitting deep in our subconscious is what creates our external reality with money. And often we won't be aware of them even. I was going to say the connector won't be aware of them, but any of our sacred money archetypes will not be aware of what is sitting in that subconscious in the day to day. It's when you take a moment just to sit and to consider actually what belief do I need to really sit with? What belief do I have to acknowledge? And do I, like, is it actually my truth? Often um, with the connectors, there may be a belief that I am no good with money, that I, I can't manage my own money. If I had my own financial independence, I would be broke. These are some of the beliefs and um, fears that would be sitting in the connector. So as a connector, I just encourage you to sit for a moment and just to think about that, what do you have to acknowledge? What do you need to transform to empower yourself to be that financially independent person? And that is all part of the work that we do in our uh, sacred money archetype coaching. It is all about transforming, acknowledging, recreating, rewriting. A belief is only your belief until you allow it to be. Yes, so we all walk around with these truths that are our own personal truth, that are not necessarily the real full truth. And we create these truths uh, through our belief system, through our fears, through our day-to-day -day connection, through the collective world that we live in. And it really does take a time to really dive deep and witness, acknowledge, and then to transform these beliefs to create a whole new financial freedom so yes, they are the three questions that our connector can sit with to create that sacred money alignment. Let's go the right way with the slides. Beautiful. With each of our sacred money archetypes as well, there is an empowering money mindset and this is what I'm gonna leave with you for our connector. These um, empowering money mindsets are a way that our sacred money archetypes and you with your sacred money archetype can really empower your financial growth. And these money mindsets are a new way of thinking. So they are going to stretch the way you normally would think and your normal understanding. But that's what they're made for. Yes, they're made to be able to stretch those limits. And as I said, each of our sacred money archetypes have one. The connector though, the connector's empowering money mindset is the more comfortable I get with money, the more I empower myself. And I would really love if you are the connector just to take that on. If you need to close your eyes down, just feel those words. The more comfortable I get with money, the more I empower myself. And that's what it's all about. You have to be able to reach that financial freedom to create, create that um, expansion of wealth. It is empowering ourselves, and the sacred money archetypes are such a vital part of being able to empower yourself and empower your money relationship. So where to from here? If you are the connector, I hope you have enjoyed this mini masterclass. And even if you're not the, con uh, the connector, I really hope you've been able to see these qualities in people around you as well, because that is the absolute 
gold that comes with the sacred money archetypes. It's not just about how we can witness these archetypal energies in ourselves, but it's also how we can witness it in those around us. And it does make such a huge difference. I have three more, the last three sacred money archetypes to introduce you to. There's another one on Thursday and then we have next Tuesday and Thursday as well. I would love you to join me in meeting those sacred money archetypes. As I said, whether they are your top sacred money archetype or not, it doesn't matter. Come along and meet them anyway. Oh my goodness, I keep going the wrong way on my slides. Let's go this way. Um, we also are in creation of some amazing, very, very exciting little self-paced do-it-yourself programs, courses to be able to really allow you to meet, understand and thrive with the sacred money archetypes. It's all well and good understanding their background, understanding who they are, but the goal comes in how you can take those qualities, how you can take the understanding that you have now of your sacred money archetypes and thrive in business, thrive in your personal life. That is what we do. That is how what we show you to do. And these little mini programs, these self-paced programs are going to give that to you as well. So you can join the waitlist for them. Um, the link is also in the comments to join that waitlist. And of course, if you just want to come and dive in with myself or with Laura Alcasasi about your sacred money archetypes, you can come and jump into a three month deep dive. It is you, me, your sacred money archetypes and understanding all of those different elements, all of the energetic qualities and um, benefits that they have and that you can have. It's all, all, everything is within you already. It's just how we are able to bring that out of you to be able to thrive, as I said, in business and in your personal life, because that is what it is absolutely all about. So thank you so much. I'm just going to have a quick check and see if there is any comments in the um, on the live and see if there's anything anyone needs me to ask. If you have any questions, whether you're watching this on the replay um, as well, if you're watching on the replay, feel free to add some questions into the comments and I will come back and answer them. Um, but it's yeah, if you need to, if you have any questions about the connector, please let me know. So I'm going to just take one last second. Each of our sacred money archetypes have been leaving us with a word and I'm going to connect in with the archetypal energy of the connector and see what it is that they wish to leave with us as well. And again, whether you're watching this live, whether you're watching the recording, it doesn't matter. This word is meant to be heard by you in this moment. So I'm just going to take just a moment just to check on in. Connect with that glorious connector energy. And the word that the connector wants to leave with us and with us all is peace. It's that word peace. And the connector if wants you to understand that that peace, that like that feeling of home when you are in that connection and in that conversation with someone and you're deep in, in building that relationship and it just feels so comfortable. There's just such a peace with it. That is possible with your finances. That is possible with your money as well. The connector saying you need to find